Hey, it's Andrew here from Home Theatre Engineering. Welcome back to our channel, and today I'm going to be singing an entirely new anthem. Okay, so for many of you, I'm sure you're aware that at some point there was an imminent release of products from the AV manufacturer Anthem, obviously based in Canada. Now, there's been a few leaks here and there, and the timetable's been a bit topsy-turvy. We were ready to release this on Wednesday, nothing happened, then it was going to be midday today, and then it didn't happen, and then suddenly there was an announcement in Australia just after midday that said the range had gone public. So here we are, and we're going to try and bring you all of the information that we have to date. So today, in Australia, as of midday Australian Western Standard Time, They've released all of the details of their new um, products, so let's go through them. First of all, there's a range of AV receivers. Now, if you haven't heard, they are the MRX540, the MRX740, the MRX1140. But there are also two updated AV processors. These are the AVM70 and the AVM90, and I am extremely interested in these. I can't wait to get my hands on them. But, as they say, that's not all. There are also three updated power amps, including the MCA-225, the MCA-325, and the MCA-525. Now, we've been using Anthem amps for a while, and we're looking forward to getting our hands on these as well, because, uh, you know, certainly in terms of value for money, these things really, you know, have found their place in the market. Now, one of the long-awaited features in the processors and the receivers is the channel matrixing or you know an ability to reassign the channels now this allows for a lot of versatility but what it does mean that you can use the uh, spare channels in any configuration of height width or presence speakers in the dolby atmos or dtx system and uh, you can also assign them to either base or mid-range drivers or you could even send them to another room. There's a whole heap of stuff. And of course, once you've done that, you can then balance the whole thing with the Arc Genesis uh, room equalization or calibration system. So let's have a look at each one of these in a little more detail. The AVM processor, starting off with the AVM70, that's gonna sell in Australia for $5,499. And the AVM90, which is the flagship, is $10,999. Now, if you think that's a lot of money, it's not. Because, guess what? The channel count in these is ridiculous, and we'll get to that shortly. So, both of these will feature the latest version of Anthem's Arc Genesis Room Correction. And this actually includes a brand new microphone. They've improved the, uh, the accuracy and the precision, and so you're going to get a new calibration mic with the unit. I talked about the channel count. Well, the AVM70 is going to be 15.2. So that's obviously 15 main channels, two subwoofers, a total of 17 channels. The AVM90 is 15.4, effectively 19 usable channels. That's awesome. And, and one of my gripes has been that, you know, when you get to a high channel count, it's actually far more useful to have a bit more than, say, 16 channels because you need to be able to uh, connect all of your subwoofers and we design and build our rooms with a minimum of two and an average of four subwoofers just to get that really smooth musical bass. Okay, both of these units have a high resolution front panel display and they also include their next generation multi-core digital signal processing. They have an all new electronics platform on board and uh, this will support all channels on the unit. Now, one of the interesting things is HDMI. Uh, what they will be doing is releasing it with HDMI 2.0b and HDCP 2.2. Now, given the issues with Denon and Marantz and the HDMI 2.1 8K debacle, I think this is probably not a bad decision. Uh, they've gone with a platform that at least we know works better. And then later on in 2021, you will be able to upgrade those boards if that's something that's important to you. But for a lot of people, actually probably not that essential. So you'll have the option. And if you wait till 2021 for your products, well, you know, that's an option too. Um, but it eliminates the uncertainty and means that you can put your, you know, your processor or your uh, AVR to work straight away. One of our bugbears with Anthem has been their network cards, and that has all been 
completely revised and revisited and we're really looking forward to not having some of the networking issues that we used to have in trying to set up anthems and if anyone's had to deliver and install an anthem you know that there's a bit of a you know hold your tongue in one direction tap your head rub your stomach to try and get the networking cards to work and you've got to go through a series of upgrades well now we've got a new uh, networking platform on there but that also brings more with it. It brings us a web-based setup with over-the-air updates. Um, you can use your phone, tablet, laptop, and that will allow you to get to all sorts of capabilities, including the power to uh, power the main zone on or off, adjust volume, change audio modes, and even adjust channel trim on the fly. One of the things I'm really looking forward to is the fact that they've also moved towards object-based audio codecs, including Dolby Atmos, DTSX and IMAX Enhanced. And these are supported for up to 15.4 channels, including four independent subwoofer outputs with phase and distance delay. Now, the video supports, we said, seven HDMI 2.0B inputs with two outputs and an independent zone to HDMI. There's also pass-through of Ultra HD signals with Dolby Vision, HDR or HLG, that's hybrid log gamma. What about streaming services? Let's talk about that for a second. The streaming services built in include AirPlay 2, Google Chromecast Audio, Bluetooth version 4.2, Spotify Connect, and apparently Room support, Rune support, that is, is on its way. Uh, there's no mention of uh, support for Tidal Connect, so we'll have to see what happens there. Um, the other thing is, if you're a turntable person, if you love your vinyl, then you'll be pleased to know that there's also an MM Phono stage built in. Finally, the flagship AVM90 AV processor features upgraded audio circuitry, four independent subwoofer outputs, and a 32-bit AKM AK4499 EQ DAC with 768 kilohertz sampling capability. Okay, let's talk about the receivers. The updated MRX receiver line are the MRX540. Now that's gonna sell in Australia for $2,999. The MRX740, retail price of $4,499, and the MRX1140, which is $5,999. Um, now, all of these add to the original feature sets that were in the previous models, um, and we can go through all of those details. Okay. Like the processor range, all three receivers feature the latest version of Arc Genesis Correction and the redesigned and high-precision calibration microphone. The MRX1140 supports 15.2 preamp channels and 11 channels of 140 watt into 8 ohms continuous power amp. The MRX740 supports 11.2 preamp channels and 7 channels of 140 watts into 8 ohms continuous power. And the MRX540 supports 7.2 preamp channels and 5 amplifier channels rated to 100 watts into 8 ohms. Uh, again, continuous power rated. Finally, moving on to the MCA Gen 2 power amplifiers, obviously the second generation in their range of MCA amps. These obviously match up perfectly with the other products, both you know, in terms of looks and um, their acoustic performance or, or their sonic performance. The three models include the MCA 525, which is gonna sell for 5,299. This will offer five channels rated at 225 watts per channel, continuous power into eight ohms. The MCA325 Gen 2, which is going to be $3,699 Australian. This is the power amp that includes three channels rated at 225 watts per channel continuous into 8 ohms. And finally, the MCA225 Gen 2, this is going to cost $2,999. Uh, and this is a two channel power amp rated at 225 watts per channel continuous power into 8 ohms. Now, I'm going to put up a matrix here so you can have a look at some of the capabilities of the products and try and work out what's what. Uh, and you can obviously capture the screen and have a look and I'll also try and attach it below. Now, these will all be available in Australia in December, but I would suggest you pre-order now so you get into the queue and you pick your unit up as soon as possible. Um, once we've got these in our hot little hands, obviously we'll do more of a review and we look forward to bringing that information to you. In the meantime, please like, subscribe and uh, ring the bell so you get the notifications. Join up, get involved with our channel and we look forward to having you on board. Thanks again.